In this weather watch, let's focus on La Nina, current conditions, and the outlook. Speaking of outlooks, I will briefly touch on the winter outlook in this video, but a couple of videos back, I made a very detailed look at kind of a, how do you scientifically approach a winter forecast? And that video again was posted not long ago, so check that out. And a special thanks, thank you to everyone who's liked or subscribed, not only to that video and this channel, but all the videos that I've been doing. Really greatly appreciate us building this weather community based on science. Speaking of science, again, let's get into La Nina this time. Now, big headlines have been the recent drought. Okay. I shouldn't say necessarily recent. It's been ongoing for quite some time. And I also discussed the mega drought in another video. But the expansiveness of the drought over the last couple of years continues to have a strong foothold on the U.S., especially the western U.S., uh, sections of California to Nevada and Utah. Very pronounced drought signal there. And no doubt you've heard about the water issues with Lake Mead and along the Colorado River. Those are going to continue to be big issues even as we go past the winter. It's going to take a long road to recovery. Now, I'm not blaming all of this on La Nina. La Nina is certainly a big time factor in this, but there's a lot more to it. But in the focus of this video, let's focus on La Nina. So we have the 1.2 region, 3 region, and 4 region. We can combine the 3 and 4 to make a 3.4 region. But why do we have regions? Well, each of those boxes, crudely displayed here, those are sea surface temperature conditions that correlate with rather high statistical correlations to precipitation patterns around the globe. They're a little bit different per those boxes or those regions. So let's take a look. So we have our boxes, 4, 3.4, 3, and 1.2. These surface temperatures of the ocean being cooler than average, that's a La Nina pattern. If they were warmer, we'd have El Nino. As we've gone in the time series, this is October of 2021, and this is present day. We've largely stayed in a very La Nina state. We've had some warmer pockets here and there and, and some changes, and we've even had some changes earlier this summer in parts of the Pacific. But bottom line is that La Nina, as far as ocean conditions, ocean temperatures, is still firmly in place. I like to think of La Nina not just in surface temperatures of the ocean. We want to know how the atmosphere above relates to that colder ocean. That makes more sense because you can have a La Nina in the ocean, but the atmosphere may not necessarily be responding as strongly as the ocean conditions are. So let's look at the atmosphere. And there's a lot of indices out there that you may have heard of. I like the SOI, Southern Oscillation Index. And basically it's comparing sea level pressure in a couple places. And that lets us know, is the atmosphere above the ocean strongly La Nina, moderate La Nina, those kind of things. Let's take a look at this. Now, this chart, I kind of like the heat map chart, if you will. It shows me cold periods, warm periods of having La Nina or El Nino or neutral phases. The historic perspective, and this goes up to 1950, 1951, we've only had a three-peat of La Nina, meaning three winters in succession, on record. We've had some in the 50s, had some in late 90s, early 2000s, and then we are going into the third as we go into late 2022 into 2023. So from a historic duration perspective, this is an incredibly strong La Nina. However, as we look at the strength, and I'll sort through the strength now, uh, as far as the current strength, it was record setting in April, May, June. But as we kind of zoom in on the list here, March, April, May, June, they were all kind of tops of the list. But where do we stand historically now? going from you know a top five event from a few months ago to where we are now. And if I sort those columns based on strength of the SOI or strength of La Nina in the atmospheric perspective, here's 2022 right in here. So we've fallen down the list of the rankings. And now again, we could break down what's happening in the Atlantic or the Pacific, and maybe I'll do that in a moment. But as far as the outlook for this area right in here, the main ENSO region, what's the outlook? I like this visual representation of the forecast. So here we are, this is November, and we're looking at multiple models from multiple countries. Uh, Japan's in there, uh, Australia, Canada, Europe, uh, US is here for NOAA. Uh, just looking at sea surface conditions there in the equatorial Pacific. And all of those models are cold, most all are into the La Nina phase. As we get into December, January, and February, 
as you go beyond, so March, April, May, you would continue to see the models leaning into that neutral territory, and then some will climb into the El Nino territory. But winter will be done by that point and the atmosphere above may not respond quickly. So for the basis of the winter forecast or the snow season, the cold season forecast, in my case, I'll go November through April. This is largely based on those El Nino, the Enso regions there of the Pacific Ocean. It's not assuming that the atmosphere is somehow going to say it's in a different phase. It's based on those ocean conditions staying La Nina through most of this period. And with that, the signal, the strongest statistical correlation to that is to keep southern areas of the U.S. dry, most of the plains dry. In these kind of patterns, you're statistically more likely to have some precip, some less, not necessarily surplus, but at average, and in some cases surplus across the Pacific Northwest, northern Rockies, some of the northern plains, uh, northern Great Lakes, and possibly even New England. Again, this is based on statistical correlation to what's happening in the ocean and assuming the atmosphere is still going to be behaving as though it's directly tied to those ocean conditions. Now, what could change this outlook? Well, the Atlantic, shown here, these are sur sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic, Certainly a different orientation here would change how, how storms would flow across the U.S., could change their speed or their direction, and that would change the winter outlook greatly or the cold season outlook greatly. It's not likely here. Now let's look at the Pacific. This will be interesting too. This is northern Pacific, so here we have Hawaii, and then Alaska's up here, and then we've got Russia, and then we have North America. What will be interesting to watch in the Pacific is the warmest blob of water that we have right now is right here, and that would based on if the atmosphere above wants to talk to it, that would mean high pressure, a ridge will be developing right here, then a trough, and then a ridge over the western U.S. So that's bad for snow lovers. That's bad for my winter outlook because that would mean uh, British Columbia and, and Washington into Oregon wouldn't have much water at all. As we get into the later fall and winter, storm systems that cross over Alaska may be strong enough to create some upwelling and cool this this ocean area off here in the Gulf of Alaska and down the west coast of North America. That happened last year. The Gulf of Alaska was quite cool. It doesn't have to happen every year, but that's something to watch out for, and that would cause a change into that winter outlook as well. But bottom line with La Nina, the current state of it, current state of affairs, La Nina is ever-present. It's going to stay in place through the winter ahead. That's going to be three years in a row of having La Nina in the winter. That's very rare. It's only happened two other times since 1950. Now, the atmosphere above is still very much in a La Nina phase. If those two go hand in hand through the winter, the outlook I showed you is going to hold. We'll have some limited moisture for the Pacific Northwest, the Northern Rockies, at times the Plains, Great Lakes, and New England dry for the southern U.S., dry in those same drought areas identified in those previous slides, still dry from the water supply standpoint along the Colorado River and Lake Mead. What we need to change, and I'll, I'll be watching for and updating you to, is those ocean conditions there where we may see the changes, and that would be the Gulf of Alaska, western coast of North America, and also the Atlantic, although that one looks to be pretty much locked in place for the winter ahead. So let's keep our eyes on the Gulf of Alaska for any potential changes to our winter outlook, and snow lovers will need some change to happen in that ocean area. Until the next time, that's this version of the Weather Watch. I'm Matt Makins. Thank you all for liking, subscribing. We'll see you next time.